Looking before I came here is quality, durability, stability, those like things, performance. I think when you go through the, the labs and see what the company puts these devices through and the threshold that we have, you'll see why quality, performance, reliability is, is part of our brand and will continue to be. Um, so we have uh, Gene and Mark who are actually going to do the tours. They have all the data, and so we'll, we'll get you off in just a minute. I do want to just sort of give you a perspective. I know there's lots of questions on what we're doing in this market around Windows Phone and all those things, and Karen knows I'm chomping at the bit to be able to tell you what we're doing. <laughs> we, we probably can't, uh, I said we probably can't. I mean, Karen's giving you strict orders. We can't today, but I think we're very... Uh, soon around the corner from being able to share a lot of details with you. As you know, we have Nokia World at the end of October. I think you'll see a number of things there. I think shortly after that, we'll be able to give you specific guidance and things that we're doing uh, with Windows Phone. What I would tell you overall is just we feel very good with the progress we're making on the strategy of the company, and in particular in this market. The interesting thing about this facility, this is one of the major facilities that does the designs and testing for Windows Phone. So what I tell you is there's Windows Phones all over this place, but they've done a security scan, and I don't think you guys will see a single one uh, in the testing today. But as I said before, uh, I'm anxious to start sharing what we're doing because we're, uh, we're in the process of making a significant comeback in this market, and I think we have some great things to talk about and we'll do that shortly, and certainly that's on our agenda. So we don't want to sidestep the issue today, but just where we're at, we're not making any announcements on that. So what you'll see on the testing is we'll, we'll be using primarily Symbian phones that you'll see go through the testing, and what I'd say is those Windows phones are getting the same, same tough treatment that you'll see in, uh, in these devices today. So before I turn it over to Marco and Gene, any questions? And I'll, I'll be around uh, for the, the afternoon and into the evening, but any questions before we... Get started on the tour. Okay, so how are we dividing? Oh, up yeah, yeah. Could you specifically, I mean, when you talk about design and testing of those Windows phones or not, but I mean, what, what type of design would you do to tailor that phone to, say, a North American customer that might be different than you know, something in Europe? Well, what, what I would say overall, without getting into the details, is we will have unique variants of the phone for our North American customers. And you can take customers as two things, our trade customers, which are our operators, and then ultimately consumers. But you know, one of the things in this market is you have to have unique devices. Myers is one of our very senior mechanical test engineers, yeah. so he's going to give a presentation of his lab here. Okay. Well, hi there, yeah. I've been uh, here at Nokia for 10 years now. So before that, previously I was working on another job doing testing as well. So I've been uh, working in the test industry a little over 20 plus years. So um, exciting stuff. We like to break things, pretty good at it, I guess. So uh, maybe we'll look behind you and go that way oh. at the start. Got a little glass fatigue set up. So this, this is just showing the durability of some of the glass that we're using these days. Um, you know, obviously your your phone takes a little lot of abuse up on the glass. There's potential to drop it. Things can impact it. So we need to have a tough, durable glass. So uh, it happens repetitively. So this is an example of what this can take. This actually has been running kind of all day. We're a little curious about it. Um, so I've been just letting this thing go all day. And glass is uh, very robust. This is actually a glass that's currently in the Nokia uh, X7. Um, let me get behind you real quick. We're going to go into this other room. Oh. So inside here, I'm going to show you. It's kind of loud. And we got. I got something. That maybe I'll explain it really quick. That, but I'm going to show you. Uh, it, it's our. It's called a vibratory wear test, and what, what we use it for is paints. Um, coatings, anytime there's like a label that's put on the phone, uh, when, when we're trying to ensure that, that uh, uh, the glass doesn't scratch, that this is the machine that we use for it. So what it is, it, it just vibrates and it's got a, a lot of material in it. It has little sharp edges. 
tries to wear the paint off, tries to wear everything off, and I'll, I'll, I'll just fire it up. It makes a lot of noise, vibrates the floor a little bit. Uh, it's kind of back in this corner. Where's? Uh, right here. Is that it's a got, phone in it? Yeah, it's got a phone in it. You just want to take a shot of it or something, or maybe it can. That's not a little hard to get into. Yeah, you guys can come in if you want. But yeah, this is, uh, this is the phone. The phone is actually going through this. It has a water and silt. It's got a little bit of a mess, but it has a water and silt, as well as all these particles. So these particles have sharp edges that actually try to wear out the phone. So this is how we evaluate paints, windows, labels, all that kind of stuff. A little messy. I mean, if you want to run in there and check it out, you can more water. I'll just let it go. Okay. I'm gonna go over my time. Form testing. So those are all evaluating the mechanical integrity of all the parts and, and also the, uh, the flexes, especially that are internal to the connected to board and upper and lower board. Um, I guess over here, we'll, we'll come back, maybe I'll come back over to here. So back over here, we have a, a wide variety of chemicals as well. So these household chemicals, maybe you wouldn't think about it, but, but uh, they actually do cause some fits to phones, uh, uh, especially like copper tone, suntan lotion. A lot of plastics don't like suntan lotion. A lot of uh, plastics actually have problems with crystal oil. So French fry grease is quite a problem for depending on what plastic. No, well, we figured that all out. So that, uh, a lot of work was done on the back end of that to make sure that it wasn't a problem. But, but you know, when, when, uh, when, when the folks go into older, then they're complicated designs, and it's really hard to get the plastic in it, and they can know there's a bunch of stress and it's uh, in the older of the part. So sometimes the application of chemicals releases those in old the main glass, behind that there can be also glass layers for the touch screen. So that can be two layers of glass. There's also another top layer in your LCD and another layer of glass. So you have a, like laminated glass here basically. So this, what we have here is, this is a, a carrier requirement one and we also have our own internal requirements for this test as well. This is my phone so I hope it doesn't break. I think it should be good and this is way above our spec. This is all the way to the top. So, we use this, it sort of simulates hitting a, a, a non-flat surface and having a point load. And we do this over multiple locations of the phone. I, I'm just doing it one dead center right now. Just for entertainment. And this is that one and a half meters, which is fairly high. But the back to it, as we see in that glass, is pretty robust. So the glass that we're using uh, these days is quite amazing, actually. A lot better than your house. So there you go. You can we can do that all day. So your personal phone is an AT&T branded X7? Yeah. Okay. Actually is. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's a collector's item. Yeah. That's what we use because I can, I can line this phone up and, and hit it exactly the same over and over again. So what? Oh, I'm just going to jump. Got one So this is going to be a two meter hit. So it's going to go up to the top, almost hit that light. And we're going to give it a good swap. Four. Yeah, there you go. And so if we do have issues, as you can see, she came back up. Still good. I don't know how to unlock this. There you go. So we go through that, and that's, that's to ensure uh, the LCDs stay, stay intact. Anything in here, actually. Like we, we've uh, researched plastics, outer shells, whatever. I will be doing a tour, and I'll show you a glimpse of what you can see around here. So we perform a lot of environmental and mechanical tests. Here, we have a lot of tests here. Um, we simulate conditions that a phone might go through in real life. And um, we bring phones here and analyze them so our journalists 
interesting guy. So um, yeah, I'm gonna watch Hopper and the Rich. Let's start over here, and we'll end up with it. Do do do.
have a high speed camera that records these drops. Uh, we don't have time to set it up and show you, but we already have a video that we've done. That's my washing machine over there for the Casio. <laughs> and the drop, that's just me flinging it down the street. So we, we study these videos, we analyze these videos, we discuss this with the design teams, and we learn from these to enhance the design of our phones. An example would be, uh, we're doing the analysis of this one I just described, we'll put it in the x-ray first and we'll say, okay, well, it's still making contact, so it's not the, the springs that are being bent or something like that, so we do like the obvious type of uh, analysis first. Uh, so that's, that's the 2D example, and we can zoom in and manipulate the different angles in that, which is really helpful. But the other capability of this machine is what we call 3D. And 3D is where we can create a 3D image of what we want, of the specimen we're looking at. And uh, an example of that is uh, we were developing a, a program where we had a full phone, and it used a magnesium hinge. And we were using two different suppliers, and we were doing drop testing. And one of the suppliers, the hinge was breaking like 90% of the time. But the other supplier, the hinge was fine. It was holding up. And, and so you look at the phones, they look exactly the same. The parts are the same. It's just a different supplier. So what we did is we did a 3D scan of the, of the hinge. And what that involves is taking thousands of x-ray photographs numerically reconstructing them into a 3D image, which is what you see on this system over here. Here's a, a picture of the hinge, and here's the, uh, like a, a, a picture of the hinge on the monitor. So let me just slide over here so I can show. So what this allows us to do is what we call virtual cross-section. With the uh, sample that I, I showed you in the epoxy, that's cutting to one location, you've got one shot.